Hi there, Dina Falcone here. I'm an herbalist, educator, author of Forging and Feasting and Earthly Bodies and Heavenly Hair. And what are we focusing on today? What's amazing in the landscape that I want you to meet is Swamp Rose Mallow. And it's actually all along this patch of the garden and we're gonna get in close in a moment. I'm just gonna go stand by it though right now. This is Swamp Rose Mallow, Hibiscus Moschutos of the Malvaceae family. And what's amazing about this plant? Hmm? <laughs> it's got this incredible, gorgeous, large, beautiful flower. This is food. We can use this in salad. We eat it raw. I'm going to show you how to do that. It's pretty simple. And I also want to make sure you know how to ID it. What other things, what other gifts does this plant have? It is a cooling, soothing plant. So it's going to be emollient. That means it's going to soothe um, things on top of the skin and it's going to be demulsant. That means it's going to soothe things inside the body, meaning our mucous membranes. Um, so, okay, let's have you come into the patch here and get to know this plant a little bit better. Letting your eyes roll over this gorgeousness. You can see this beauty. It is a five petaled Malvaceae family flower and it has actually, let's take it up, uh, let's get a little more macro even with the flower. So here's the uh, Swamp Rose Mallow or Hibiscus Moschutos flower. This is a typical Malvaceae flower with five petals and I'm going to actually pull them apart for you in a moment so you can really see them. And then we also have this central, this central columnar arrangement fused stamen. So the, the reproductive parts of the Malvaceae flower is fused into this columnar arrangement in the center. Um, when you're going to eat this flower, it's often good to remove this part because this is where more of the allergenic, um, uh, what would you say, reactions can occur. And what else? So let's see if I, oh, I know what else to mention, that this flower that I'm holding is probably seven or so inches wide, but it can, sometimes can grow up to nine or even 12 inches, which is pretty incredible in diameter. And also it can be a pure white, but often you're going to see this crimson uh, little center. It's called the crimson eye, but really it's just this coloring in the center. It can also be um, pink and it can also be red. So you're going to see a lot of color variation in this flower. And I want to just take apart the petals so you can see them. And let's do that. So we pull. Oop. I didn't do such a good job there. Let me see if I can get a better removal. Here I've taken apart the petals. This is the part that you're going to eat. This is your salad right here. This is the reproductive part that was in the center and that we will, we, I might eat it once in a while. That is just the stamen and the pistil part in here. I might eat it, but I suggest you do not. And this green part here, this is the calyx. So we've got the sepals making the calyx there beautiful thing and all the pollen falling out. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, let's move on to talking about the plant itself. How are you going to know you're with this plant when it's not in flower? Let's go look at the plant's stem, leaf arrangement, leaf shape, and so on. Let's go. Just to show you a pinker version so that you can see the petals have more pink than the one that we just dissected, also to note height. Typically a swamp rose mallow is four feet. This one might even be a little less than four feet um, so you can see but it grows all the way up to seven feet sometimes. I usually see them between four and six feet tall. Okay let's go show you more about the plant. Here we have a flower bud just forming getting bigger, swelling up more, getting further along on the journey. Now the flower is actually starting to break out of 
the green calyx. And here I hold the Swamp Rose Mallow's blossom really starting to open. It's just budding out. You can see this beautifulness and I'm going to show you its next stage. Actually, before we leave, can you see this right here? It has a long peduncle. This is a flower stalk. So you're looking for that always too. Here we see the fully opened blossom. Here we are with Swamp Rose Mallow and it grows from the ground up here in zone five and you're scanning the stem with me right now which is a rounded stem and you can see that the leaves actually alternate up this main stem and they actually change shape which we'll show you in a moment but I just want you to get a sense of the plant here and here we are with the emerging flower buds. What you're seeing here is last year's dead main stem. So just to give you a sense of height, this is last year's dead main stem. Here we have the leaves of one plant. This is what it looks like lower down in the plant and it has three lobes. You're often going to see that. And then if you move up the plant, it loses its lobing. Actually, there's a little bit hair, a little hair of a lobe right there. And here we keep moving up the plant and it gets more elongated. So there you go from lower on the plant to higher on the plant. Let's also notice the leaf margins here are serrated. So you have irregularly toothed leaf margins. They can be softly toothed and that's called crenate. And here we also have a very long tip, a pointy leaf tip. But the shape, if we look at the shape here, it's kind of eggy or ovate or also orbicular, which is basically circular, round here. So leaf shape. Um, also notice long leaf stalks. So we have petioles here. And let's also just flip the plant over, flip the, the leaf over, and you can see that it's whiter underneath. And also, if you feel the plant, you will feel its texture is soft. So it is actually very slightly fuzzy and soft. One more thing, leaf dimensions. So you've got leaf dimensions typically between one and a half inches to four inches wide. I'm sorry, one and a half to four inches wide, yes, to four to six inches long. So that's just your leaf size range, one and a half inch to four inches wide from four to six inches long. More ID clues. I am going to pick a flower here and I want to talk about its flavor and its texture. So when you feel it, it's super soft. And when you actually I want to talk about its smell too. So before I were to bite it, I'd crush it and see if I can get any hints from its smell. And in fact, it's just a little teeny bit, tiny bit of a muskiness when I crush it. Um, but not really much, <laughs> not aromatic. So we do not have an aromatic plant here. And now when I crush it, what's happening is it's breaking and it's actually quite slippery. So, and when I bite it, mm -hmm, I can really say that the flavor is mild, um, but that uh, I can really feel the texture is, or the, um, the consistency is quite soothing and slippery. Um, perhaps what we call, not perhaps, but it definitely is mucilaginous. So the Malvaceae family is famous for its mucilage and okra lives in this family. And if you've eaten okra, you know what I'm talking about. So that's the flavor and the aroma profile. We have a mild, non-aromatic scent and we have a mild, non-aromatic or not very strong flavor. And we do have a slippery, soothing, quote, perhaps slimy texture. Not everyone's favorite, but I really love it. Okay, 
So let's move out now in our focus and think about where are you going to find this? Where is this plant native to? This is native to North America, to southeastern Canada, into the central and east, the central and eastern part of the United States, um, zones four to nine. Um, but where is it in the world now? It's moved into Europe, parts of Europe, parts of Asia. So that's the worldwide range. What about its habitat? So we are in a wild garden where I introduced it and it has rich soil with good moisture, but naturally it would like to grow or you're gonna find it in marshes, in wetlands, in the edges of waterways where it can be brackish, it can be salty, it can be fresh water. Um, so this is swamp rose mallow. So swamp gives you the hint of its habitat. And of course, typically it will be in full sun, but it'll take up to six hours. It'll need six hours of light to actually bloom. Um, so I think that is the habitat synopsis on Hibiscus moschutos of the Malvaceae family. And I really hope that you can bring this beauty into your life. And if you can't find it in the wild, you can certainly plant it in your garden. Again, if you're in the zones four to nine and this makes an amazing soothing tasty lettuce like substitute or just a lettuce like addition to your salad so if you've enjoyed this and you'd like more perhaps you'd like to check out my course wild food health boosters and herbal remedies see you next time thanks for being here may you eat this beauty